I'm delighted to be joined now by Paul Flanagan of Ballier, ahead of the AIB Munster GEA uh, Hurland Final, which takes place this Saturday, December 3rd at 3.15 at Semple Stadium, County Tipperary, where Ballier will face off against Ballygunner of Watford. The AIB GEA All-Ireland uh, Club Championships feature some of the hashtag toughest players from communities all across Ireland. It is these very communities that the players represent that make the AIB GEA All-Ireland Club Championships unique. Now in its 32nd year supporting the club championships, AIB is extremely proud to once again celebrate the communities that play such a role in sustaining our national games. Paul, you're only straight out of the classroom after teaching a little bit of Irish there. What came to mind just before um, you came on the call there is you've gone from being a player, obviously you were, you were on the All-Ireland winning under-21 teams, then you end up being an analyst speaking Irish for years on TG Cahar, and now you're you know in the games where you're being spoken about. That's been quite a journey for you. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I suppose that's the that's the the, the day job, Laurie and and uh, it's it's great. I, I I enjoy it. Um, I'm very I'm very fortunate to be in here in in Art School Reach in Limerick, which is a big sports school as well. So there's a big crossover there between uh, between that. I suppose there was a time as well, Shane, that I found that I was probably <laughs> you nearly feel like a, a little bit of a fraud that I was I was playing. I was probably doing a little bit more analysis work and wasn't playing as much as I, I probably wanted to either. So, um, but it's been great. Like I, I, I actually was doing the, the Munster final, uh, the Munster club final last year down in Parky Cueve where Bally Gunner played, played off against Kilmallock. So yeah, it does, it does come full circle in some ways. Yeah. And did you ever find it kind of like, so I suppose par you had a lot of injuries over the years and that probably held you back with Claire, was it? Yeah, like I definitely, I had successive injuries there with issues with my Achilles tendons, and and then went for knee surgery in in twenty eighteen with a patellar tendon um, issue. Combination of that, I suppose, and just not getting not getting in. Um, case of case of my own, probably battles on that front as well. Uh, struggling to struggling to get into the squads, match day squads, and struggling to get on the, on the field. Um, and players, you just want to play like you just want to play as much as much as you possibly can. So, getting that bit of rhythm back, getting a bit of momentum back, and and probably getting your body in a a good physical place has helped an awful lot. And so, when you're still doing the analysis and the TG Cahar matches, and like, is there ever a part of you that's like, I'm not fully sure how hard I should go in here because maybe like I'm still harboring ambitions of playing county, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, I'm very conscious of it. I think um, I'm conscious of I'm conscious of it during the year, particularly that uh, and and the guys with Nemeton and TG Cahar have been great that way. Conscious of it because at the end of the day, you're still playing, and and you know to cross the divide there, you you just have to be careful. I think that you know there's guys and there's guys I'm I'm playing against, and then there's there's teams that I'm potentially playing against, and not in any sort of uh, competitive way i don't think i i just try to be you're trying to be prof a professional and what you're what you're doing on any given day so yeah i, I during the when the particularly when the inter-county season kicks off um you know there's there there isn't a whole pile that i would do there mm, you can always say to most lads oh, that was lost in translation so most of us can't speak it perfectly well anyway yeah, i get that i get that a bit now as well uh, in fairness the guys are quick to say well like no you'd you had a nice jacket on there or a nice shirt or whatever, but uh, I was kind of I was kind of lost after a while. <laughs> so uh, then, like, what age were you when you got your first senior call up to Clare? Um, I initially came in with uh, I came in with Dave, Davey Fitzgerald in 2012, just on the training panel, and I was let go the following I was let go the following January, I think. Um, and look, probably I was coming in off 21s. I, I probably hadn't a whole pile under my belt to to be. To, to be kept on that panel um and then subsequently was brought back the following year then in, in 2013 and 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 hung around the the, the pan i was part of that squad um i know that sounds loose like you know, when i'm saying hanging around hanging around the panel but i do look in hindsight now like looking back on my my early 20s i i just struggled with the with the whole idea of um of inter-county hurling and being and, and probably finding a, a a place for myself there and to be I suppose to have that confidence to to play as as well as I probably probably could, and um, you know it was it was a bit of a it was a bit of a struggle. And like if I was to say to you that the following years, like fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen, um, there were tough years. Like personally for me, anyway, I I found it very hard. Um, 
and you, but you were always grinding. You always had the dream. You always wanted to to get on and to see where you could improve and and see could you could you could you etch your way in. But um, it proved it proved quite difficult. All right. So when you're saying that those years 14, 15, 16 were tough, is this something that's nothing to do with hurling, or is it like you're looking in at lads who were on your under twenty one team and that you were successful with that they're all you know hitting the ground running? You had. You know, obviously Tony doing what he did, getting hurt a year at nineteen, or you know, what was it something not to do with hurling? No, I, I to be honest, I was probably very much wrapped up in it, Shane. Uh, probably too much so that in your early twenties, my my whole world essentially wrapped around the game, and it wasn't a particularly healthy thing in hindsight to have. And I probably looked at at the other guys my own age. Look, I played on under 21 of minor teams and with them, and you were ambitious enough that you wanted to be on on the same team and playing on those on those big days. And uh, unfortunately, I was on the subs bench or behind the subs bench, which um, which look, it's 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 never it's never easy. And I probably have a, a an added perspective of perspective of of guys that that find themselves there now, um, because it's not a million miles from. From where you have to get to playing as well so i i yeah look i found it tough i found it tough i was going from training to training you don't have you don't have traction to go off i suppose is the other thing you don't have fit like feedback from yourself from a game of how you we all know i oh, i did this or i did that and i could have done this and i could have done that within any game scenario with your club or with your county and i just didn't have that to go off so you're you're essentially starting starting from scratch you know and when you got recalled, then was it was it before or after Brian Lohan or around that? Because you know the way you can be on a panel and nobody across the country would know that you're back on a panel. Yeah, no, I was in with um, I was in with Jerry and uh, Jerry O'Connor and Don Maloney the time they took over um, in around 2017, and that's when I kind of faced I hit those injuries straight on. We we went through a long campaign with Ballier in 2016. Uh, we got to the All Ireland Club final. Um, and as you know well <laughs> and uh look we 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 um we lost the Kula on that day but it was a, an immense journey like uh, an immense journey for through the Munster club um we played Glen Rovers on and in in Munster and it was uh but at the same time it being an immense journey and it just it pulled right through to the the following spring essentially and uh my body probably wasn't in a great place leaving that and I knew I had my an e issue that had flared up pretty significantly so yeah those couple of seasons were 17 and 18 um 17 i got the operation in 18 and uh pushed into pushed into 19 before i finally hit the brakes and said i need to take a i need to take a break from this you know so how long did you take off or how long did it take to recover fully yeah we we look the the rehab had had started well in 18 and then uh 2019 look i just said to myself there's gonna have to be some some sort of change here um myself and my girlfriend sarah decided to, to head away traveling for for a few months and in and around that time i i started working with adrian o'brien as well on the strength and conditioning front he's just, it's really come full circle now like he's he's involved We're gonna come back to him in a while yeah, <laughs> yeah. come back to him in a while um but just just started tipping away in the gym trying to trying to get get his programs on board and um and gradually found my body getting a little bit stronger did that even when we were away so i was in australia for a month and new zealand for a month um going around in a van which uh i tell you for the for the two of us now um we're building a house this year and uh if there ever was a ever was a good test of things that was that was it <laughs> we laugh about it now but look yeah no and i came back Came back with a real bite for things, to be honest. Just a bite for work. I didn't know what was in store, really. I said, "Look, I'll give this a good, give this a good crack with the club," and um, that campaign went quite well. And and Brian asked me in the following year, so or the following September, it was just before that winter championship. So then, um, were you around twenty eight or nine then that you actually made your championship debut? You you hadn't made your championship debut up until this, had you? No, uh, twenty eight. Yeah, twenty eight was Ooh. the um so um at the end of yeah right in the middle of that winter championship we played uh we played leash i actually had probably a week do you know what some things happen and you wonder you wonder how 
it's happened and and why it's happened. I I actually had a horrendous week that week leading into the leading into that leash game. Um, it's like a lot of people probably probably wouldn't know it. Um, but a good friend, a really good friend of mine. Um, look, we were we were friends for for years and years. And the Friday, so the Friday week before that leash game, um, uh, he, he he passed away and. Like my whole, oh, my whole world for that weekend was, you know, up in a heap. I rang Brian. I said I wasn't going to be training on Friday, and I actually went back to to training on Sunday. And um, just, just, I found it a great release actually to to deal with the to deal with the the grief that I was experiencing. Um, uh, Doc uh, David O'Connor, he's he's his second anniversary he was there recently, and he he was a big rugby player, big sport uh, sports player, but. Like he was a huge supporter of mine and um it was uh, i was like immensely raw really at the time and i even the boys pulled me out of it really well that week and helped me out and uh yeah it was in a way you know probably the greatest thing that that ever happened you then happened the following week um where i got to you know got the the experience of, of starting my first championship game but uh yeah a real tale of uh Two ends of the two ends of the coin in in this game. It's 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 mad how it's just mad how things can happen. Yeah, and uh, my memory of the game, I watched it on a stream at the time. And did you end up as sort of the spare man at the back in that game? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was thinking just straight in, and you're the spare man because there's a lot of responsibilities to be that you have to be sharp on the ball, you know, uh, tight touch yeah. and all that. And on your debut, you know, that's that's a fair ask. Yeah, exactly. It was a fair. It, it was, and uh, I, I probably came away from it a little bit more dis, disappointed, or that I hadn't probably done enough to, you know, get a get a get a place for the following following week. We played uh, we played Wexford, I think, but um, certainly learned an awful lot. Like learned an, probably as much in that six in that seventy minutes as, as anything. Like I was probably in a good place physically, but there were still areas that I just needed to. To squeeze on as you said like just the elements of play that you could you could have could have done better um so yeah like every day is a school day in that regard i suppose i'm still see you're still picking up loads which is which is great yeah and then the following season i remember particularly against tipperary at a great game and this is back to packed crowds that was down in limerick and of course tip deservedly got a penalty that day <laughs> do you remember the one where jack morris was out by the the ennis road oh, I, and he, and he's, oh, he's, I remember <laughs> right <laughs> close but, enough to me it's close enough to be here in school i'd say where it was <laughs> but um, do you feel you really settled down in there at this stage and you feel you know because you, you seem very much one of the main men on the team these days probably one of the leaders even um i don't know do you do you ever uh do you ever settle down really it's it's so i've said it a few times at this stage, I, I, the game is so fickle like that you need to, and I say it to the boys here in, in Article Reach that, um, you know, you really have to develop an ability to take the the good with the with the tough and, and the good with the bad. Like, I, I don't like putting a term bad on it because it, it kind of gives a, gives a, a, I suppose, a feeling to, to the thing. But, um, you know, I think every challenge presents something new and, like that, you know, we, we've a, we've an ambitious bunch, bunch in Clare and are, are, are excited of, of what's coming. And but I suppose over the last uh, the last few months, you you can reflect on on a season and a lot of good work, you know, really good campaign in, in, in Munster and a lot of things, a lot of things learned. So it's um, yeah, I don't know. Can you can you ever really sit still? It's it's you're constantly trying to evolve as much as you can. Yeah, and like you, you had some unreal games this year. Well, if we can just leave out the kick anyone for a moment, because obviously that didn't go great for you. You didn't play great against Wexford either, but you got through it. But that game down in Turles against uh, Limerick, that'll I know you didn't win, but by God, what what a highlight in terms of like when you look back on great games you played in, that's going to be up there. Yeah, uh, yeah, an amazing, like an amazing, an amazing day. Like you, and even um, obviously, you know. You, Sometimes you have to be cold enough to leave leave the result. We were obviously immensely disappointed afterwards, um, but a titanic battle. And like I have this, I have this me memory of uh, like going around. You're going around the band be behind the band beforehand, and and you can see the crowds and everything. But I was sent my into the family WhatsApp at home, 
uh, after after the game and there was a picture of my grandfather and he was standing he's 90 this year like and he was standing up at the back uh, the back of the new stand in Turles and just standing up watching everything around him and uh, it's a phenomenal picture like just seeing all the crowd in the background and he's there and um so yeah there's just moments like that that stand out to you I suppose that are really really special and 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 that mean a lot you know and something actually as you mentioned the the parade you didn't break from the parade you you seem to just wait there for an age and let limerick uh, leave first is this just something that happened or was there, was there some sort of a plan with this no i don't think there was any uh there was uh there was anything anything major there tends to be a there tends to be a bit of a bit of fun in the parades all right like even when i see it at count at, at club level like between uh a county final level and some lads like looking at each other and some lads don't and some lads start talking and it's yeah i can it's it's funny enough like uh the way the way it can the way it can go um but no i don't think there was yeah I, I think for a finish i think for a finish look around Avine was going to play going going to be played no one was breaking and then um that was that was just the way it, the way it finished yeah yeah, and now when you look back on the semi-final against Kilkenny, of course it wasn't ideal that John Conlon had to pull out. Uh, was it just before the game that you figured that out and then Potty Fitz was obviously drafted in and things were rejigged, or, or did you know a little bit sooner than that? Um, no, John, look, John John was uh, John was in trouble, all right. Um, like, like we knew when, when, when I met him that day that he, that he was going to be in trouble and, and just knowing John, like, and, and the person he is, he... He would have done absolutely everything in his power, um, particularly that week, to to get himself right. Um, and it's one of those things like uh, the involvement of a team. You've got you know you've got to be able to deal with with scenarios like that, and people get injured, people get hurt, and 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 stuff. So yeah, it's 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 one of those it's one of those things. Um, John was obviously a massive um, massive part of the whole year, and it particularly um, particularly at six, you find that you know no more than. Um, with, with with our club or with county you know your six is is essentially a, a linchpin and a lot of uh, you know a, a lot of things can go go through him so it's um yeah it was it was disappointing to lose him but at the same time to be honest Shane, we can have we can have no excuses like we were we you know i look back at the game during the week we didn't we didn't look um like what we what we looked like in in Munter, in Munster and and struggled to to get to the pitch and pace of it there was still probably a time during the first half that we actually could have influenced the game a bit better and made better decisions but look those are things those are things you learn um first time in Croker in a while as well and uh but we've we've plenty of plenty of long, young guys that have 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 learned a few things from from that day as well so and more than myself like you go out um Look, I was marking. I was marking TJ that day. Uh, like you, you, you have good knowledge on, on the type of type of game that it, it might uh, prove to be. But it's a it's a different thing to to go out and 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 execute it every single time. So, yeah, plenty of plenty of learnings from that. You mentioned earlier, Adrian O'Brien, um, the coach, an S and C coach, who's now gone in with Claire, that he'd given you an S and C program before when you were rehabbing your knee, but um. He was coaching both Ballier and St. Finbarris this year. Uh, both win county titles, end up against each other in Munster. He obviously won by a point. But that was an extremely odd situation when you had this, where you had the same coach with both teams. Now, was he just S&C or was he actually doing hurling coaching with you? Yeah, he was doing the hurling with us. Um, so Kevin O'Grady was from Baja, was our hurling coach last year, and he subsequently went to the States, and Adrian was involved in a strength and conditioning capacity then. And um, it moved on to this year, and and Robbie asked him in to 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 do the hurling as well. So like, it's amazing. Like I, I really have to pinch myself sometimes. Like when you when you see how just how it's moved, and the fact that he he found it quite challenging actually. The whole I think the thing with the bars the last week and, and trying to trying to differentiate yourself from both camps. Um, and I just I remember I gave him a, I gave him a shout at the week leading up to the game. I was like, like this is a great position to be in. Don't worry, don't worry a jot about that. Like let let two teams go out and 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 play as as best they can and, and see where see where they end up. But I suppose yeah. it's different as a coach. Like I it's fine as a player me saying that, but for him, you know, you've your you've your whole year wrapped up with, with both camps. Um so it probably was a, a strange feeling for him. 
Yeah, it certainly must have been. He's um, is he involved with Arts Reach as well? I know his his son Shane is obviously a very prominent member of the Limerick Under Twenty panel, and he had that highlight reel score with Arts Reach last year that did the rounds on social media. Um, so yeah, is he involved in the school as well, Adrian? Um, yeah, he would have been involved in the the coaching setup here in Arts School um, as well, and like and coming in and helping out as as much as he could, you know, with strength and conditioning of of our of our teams here and that was you know how i came across him essentially like and uh, you know i thought shane shane was in my leaving sir p class last year and obviously um a great guy and it was involved with our our hearty, our hearty cup and croak cup panel so yeah it, it's uh and now actually shane's brother gavin is uh is in first year now so i've adrian's gavin and, oh, there's not another one coming is yeah. there <laughs> but that's that's the name that's the nature of this place you know you you get um you've brothers and 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 so on but it's great to it's it's great to see it too because like you know you know people belong to them and you know their club and and stuff like that um so yeah he would have been involved in the capacity here as well could you not just sabotage some of these young limerick hurlers because uh they're proven to be a real problem for us yeah i know someone said someone i, I read something last year saying like you know that I was coaching uh, Limerick, Limerick talent or that kind of way. Like it's 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 funny how some people uh, how some people might might perceive it or read it. But uh, uh, look, I'm 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 delighted to be in a job that where where sport is a uh, where sport is a big part and how how the young lads respond to to sport. Like we've eight hundred boys here here in our school and you know they're real they have a genuine love for 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 sport whatever that code may be and it's 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 great to see no surprise that shane o'brien is a tank when his father's an snc coach yeah 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 i know and i look like i i remember seeing a video of uh, of shane and and he was he was juggling back back a few years ago and like that would be part of adrian's adrian's work as well like there'd be different skill-based stuff that you'd be doing and um you know things that really that really would challenge you and trigger every sort of every sort of movement that you could do so yeah i know there was definitely he was definitely no fear for him having that at home okay uh well look this weekend you're obviously up against bally gunner they gave you a bit of a, a heavy one last year but mm. you didn't have tony kelly and i know one player isn't going to make up all that difference but i presume you're you're confident of putting in a real performance in this game yeah look and it's look it's it's harsh but you you don't have to look too far to to see um to see the rat of the monster championship and to also see how 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 strong a side they are like we we don't have to to look too far in, in the rear window to to see that so um and the more than uh, at the same time you know all th you know all things being equal you you go into you go into this week with um with optimism as well and and look to the look to the weekend with excitement like it is it is a monster final and, and you want to you want to put yourself in in the best position you can for that yeah tony missing last year look we got over a county final last year and it was we were to the pin of our collar we were really really tight game against Ina Kilimona and to win it without tony like there's no point in saying there's no point in saying otherwise that he was a he, he's obviously a huge a huge part of us and and so on so he um yeah to have everyone fit and healthy and well uh we've a lot to improve on from from last week against the bars i was saying to someone here in school about uh saying uh, i asked him jokingly saying like are you going to <laughs> are you going to ennis the weekend and he said paul look i'll be honest i think i'm going to go to the gaelic grounds and i was like do you know what fair enough that is if i if i was in your shoes i'd probably do the same thing so look that's that's the way it is like that's the that's the the, the side of the draw that were, that it was between the Pierschick and, and Ballygunner was very strong. So, um, yeah, we'll just get ourselves ready as best we can. Okay. Well, look, brilliant stuff, Paul. Really uh, enjoyed and appreciate chatting to you and best of luck at the weekend. Perfect. Thanks a million. Thanks, Shane. Okay, so that was uh, Paul Flanagan there of Ballier. Just a reminder that we've got the UCD coaching clinic coming up this weekend, and there's such crossover between both codes. It is a football one with Jared Brennan, Paul Galvin, and Stephen Poacher, but uh, plenty to be picked up whether you're a hurling or a football person.